Today, I'll demo the Test Sprite MCP server, and you'll see how it can help you find and fix bugs in your code faster. This is particularly useful for web applications that have a front end and a back end. So today, I'm demonstrating this with a Next.js app that I vibe coded just for the purposes of this demonstration. It's very useful for vibe coded applications where it seems to work well on the surface, and then you start clicking a few buttons and notice there's some 404s coming up, or you or sign-ins aren't working. And so this MCP tool allows you to discover all of these things by creating tests for you and, and these comprehensive user journeys. It's super cool. So first I'll show you what Test Sprite MCP is, how to get up and running, and then we'll quickly get into the demonstration where we use it. Now, this is a paid product, but everything I'm showing you in this video is within the free tier. So I highly encourage you to sign up using the link in the description below and follow along. And thank you to Test Sprite for sponsoring today's video. Test Sprite is an AI agent for software testing. It automatically creates product requirement documents, generates tests, and then runs and schedules those all through their platform. But today we're focusing on the MCP integration that they've just launched. We're gonna be demonstrating this with Cursor. And the first step is to sign up. So once you sign up, you'll have access to the whole platform like this. And I'm just gonna click the API keys section on the left, and we're gonna create a new API key for this um, server. I'm just gonna call it demo. Now the next step is to install the MCP server. And with cursor, there's a button where we can just click this to add to cursor. However, I wanna show you how to do this with any uh, MCP compatible host. And I can grab this command right here and go into cursor. And I'm gonna type cursor settings. We'll open that up and I'm gonna to go to tools and integrations and click plus on add new MCP server. And I'm just gonna paste this at the very top of my file. And now I just need to clean this JSON up. Let me make this bigger. So this MCP server is a node package, which means we're gonna be using NPX to run this. And it authenticates us using an environment variable API key. And that's what we just generated. So I'm gonna copy that. I'll come back and we're gonna paste this in here. So now that that's saved, if I go back to cursor settings, um, I can see that the test sprite's already been picked up and it's enabled a bunch of tools for us. If I look at the documentation for getting started, the magic command is help me test this project with test sprite. So let's just copy that and we're gonna give this a shot on my next JS application right here. So we'll run this command with cursors agent, but first I wanna show you the app. So I'm gonna say npm run dev, it's running on localhost port 3000, and this is what it looks like. It's a landing page for an MCP server. And we have some information about the product, but there is features, there's a whole dashboard in here. So in order to sign in, what I'm gonna do is just prep this. So here it is, the news, it's a news data MCP server. And the idea is like people could, you know, subscribe to this if they wanna get news for their AI agent. So what I'm doing right now is I am just seeding this database with some demo data. And you can see we've created an admin user and a test user. Um, so let me demonstrate the test user. And uh, okay, so, so this is a part of the app that I wanna try and test. It's, it's our dashboard. This is like what the user can do once they've created an account, maybe make some API keys, test those, track their usage. Okay, so it's finally time to test Test Sprite's MCP server. That is a mouthful. So I'm gonna go to README and I'm gonna open up the agent and paste in this help me test this project with Test Sprite. I thought I'd just add the README as context, but probably not necessary. And away we go. So I'm using Claude 4 Sonnet, thinking it's the main model that I use for all of my code generation. It's kind of my go-to model right now. It's calling the bootstrapped Test Sprite MCP server for this project. And so over here, um, this has been spawned. So check this out. This is running locally on my computer, this port 60814. And this is gonna allow me to give some information about my application so Test Sprite can properly create the test. So we can toggle between backend or front end. I'm gonna start with front end here. And the password was user123. And now I can add a product spec doc. And I have one of these, I called it prd.md. And this is a document I used when I vibe coded this application. I got ChatGPT to generate this for me. And then I came in here and I tweaked it a little bit. And so this has the whole description of my application, what it's supposed to be doing, how it's supposed to be working. So I'm just gonna open that up and it's called prd right here. And I'm gonna pay, put this in. 
Now this is not required, but I think it's helpful if you have something like this. Okay, so upload success. And if I come back to cursor, we can see it's already started to work. It detected that I input that information. And so the first thing it's doing is generating a code summary. It has our whole tech stack, and then it has our features like the authentication system, the landing page, the user dashboard. It looks like it's actually just being generated in a temporary directory, but we do have this standard prd.json, which we've generated. And so this is a structured product requirements document that TestBrite has just generated for us. And I think this in and of itself is really valuable. A, a structured product requirements document is really nice to have. Okay, so that's done. And now we're calling test right generate front end test plan. So at this point, we're not seeing output because there's a bunch of server side code being executed. And you can see that we need to be authenticated in order for this to work properly. In plain language, like this is happening on the test sprite MCP side of things. And they're just gonna send back the result of this. And now it's going to execute the tests and analyze the news data MCP website. Got a little progress tracker. So I'm gonna go back to the test sprite platform. There's an MCP tests area. And you can see in here, we've got our tests zero of 20 passing let's see okay so they're all running right now and it's created a whole bunch of tests there's 20 of them in here and they all have really nice readable names so i'm gonna wait okay so this one's just passed user login with correct credentials and it's literally got a video of it running this that's so that is so cool so here's the code okay let's have a look at this hmm it's hard to see I can't really make it bigger than this. So it's using Playwright. Uh, it's like a web browser. It's it's and it's got this window size. That's the video that we just saw was from this. It's in headless mode. It created this code to run this test. You can see we have like a browser that we're creating and then we're like navigating in that browser and we're going to be plugging in our password. It's using these X paths in order to find the right elements on the page. And then it's plugging in our um, user and there should be a password somewhere in here. This is like incredible stuff. Let's see what else it did. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this so far and you like my stuff on YouTube, you should sign up for my newsletter. Head on over to my website, zazencodes.com, and you can sign up and get a few free digital downloads. And the newsletter itself is just once a week, and I just highlight my latest video, so you can check it out if you are interested. Oh, everything else is still running. This one here failed. Let's have a look at this, API key management. Okay, so we're signing in. Then it says get API key, so it's confused. Basically, this indicates there's some confusion in the interface. Okay, the user signup has failed. Let's try this one. This is crazy. This is so crazy cool. Okay, so it's, it didn't look like, oh, the user already exists, that's good. Initial server error. Okay, so we're not able to actually create new users, it looks like. All right, we just got another pass. This is number two, user signup with invalid email format. I guess what this shows is that we're not able to sign up unless the format is prop is correct. That's that's good. I just need to wait for this last test to complete because I want this whole process to play out. Okay, so we've got a whole report here and the language model has output a bunch of stuff, but I'm more interested in the file that it's created. And you can see it's done this test right MCP test report. So I can go ahead and open that up and this is what it looks like. And you can see the results of all of these tests that, that we've run. And there's also links, which is really cool. So I could go to this link and this just brings me right to that test where it was run. And I really like this. Uh, by the way, I can also find it in here. If I look at testbritereport.md, then I can preview that. So I can open this up with my mark markdown preview and I can look at these results. And we can also see all of the test code here. And I believe this is in our project. So user login with correct credentials, if I look for that. So it's actually written all of these tests with all this awesome playwright stuff right into our project. Check it out. So this is where, this is where they are. So this is part of our source code that we can now take and commit to GitHub. And by the way, guys, like this is for free, right? I'm just on the free tier of this service right now. And it's created all of these tests for us that we can we can use. We can just pick up and use these for free. OK, so now let's try and address this problem. You say, here's our email, here's our password. But we don't click sign in. We click go back home. Um, so let, let me try, see if I can't fix this. Here's that magic command. Help me test this project with test sprite. 
go back to cursor and I could change my agent, but I really like Claude for Sonnet. I think it's a really smart and great agent. So I wanna keep using that. Test Bright has been bootstrapped for your front end project. And now it's calling this generate code summary. This is the first sort of thing that TestBright has done for us. And I find a summary like this where it has a structured view of our tech stack and the features of, of our application. This is the first valuable artifact that TestBright has automatically generated for us. And so the next thing we'll see it generate is this is a product requirements document. In fact, it's already done. It's right here. It's called standard PRD. And to me, I love this and the fact that we can get this for free with this like using this MCP server is, is awesome. So it, it get, tells me the name of my project and the date and whatever, but this part here. So we have a project overview. We have core goals as like a structured list. We have key features again as a structured list. We have user flows. And I want to stress that it's going to create this even if we didn't have a product requirements document going in. It'll just look at what you have and it'll do its best to figure out all of this stuff. But this is important for Test Sprite because this is going to seed their tests. Okay, so it just generated our front end plan. So th this is going to describe all of the tests that we're about to create and run. So for example, test number two, user sign up with email and password. It's going to test this flow and it has various actions like do this then do this, then do this. And this is a description of the test that we would want to go ahead and implement. This batch of tests has just finished and let me go show you what these look like in the web platform. Okay, so let's see some uh, API key generation. Let's have a look at this one. So this one failed the new button. So we're, what are we gonna do? So we sign in. Uh, so, okay, so now it's properly getting the sign in button and we tried to click new key hit there and we didn't, we didn't generate a new key. So we have this error description test stop to the error preventing the new key button does not work as expected. So if I wanted to fix this, right, one thing I could do is copy this error and come to cursor and I can keep chatting inside of this context right here. Like I could just paste that in and start trying to fix these. I probably wouldn't want to do that. I think I'd want to open up a new tab. So I'll say create new tab and I would just want to go ahead and paste this in right here. Try and grab that so I can literally just embed this entire test as context for this command. So there's an error running this test and here's the error. Um, please fix, get that, get that running. Okay, so while that works on fixing that error, I'm gonna go back and we'll just review the final results of test sprite and everything that it did for us. So after running this final batch of tests, which we showed, it created this test right MCP test report. And to me, this is a really interesting artifact. So rather than looking at this inside of cursor, I'd rather go into NeoVim and I'm looking at the same project down here, but we can see this folder test sprite tests. These are all of our tests. And this is incredible to me that we can now go ahead and commit these tests to um, version control. And you can see they're using playwright. These are totally runnable on my system. There's nothing special or proprietary that TestRite has. I can just run these tests myself. Now let's look at the test report. This is a very like professional style document that's very straightforward and you can understand like what your app's doing, how it's working based on these completely automated tests. We can also go ahead and actually find these. So let's go back to that API key one test generation. So this was the one that we were looking at where I asked cursor to, to go ahead and try and fix it. And we can see the, the file itself, like it links us to the test file right here, but it also links us to the online result. So I can just type GX in NeoVim and I can open that URL up. So I'm going to upload all of this code to GitHub so you can check out this project and all these tests yourself if you want to reference them. However, I think all, what you really should just do is sign up for test sprite install this mcp server and give it a shot and you'll get all of this artifacts that are really awesome generated for your own project thank you for watching and if you've got this far i'd appreciate it if you give me a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more stuff like this so what are my real thoughts on test sprite i think it's an amazing tool and I also think the MCP implementation needs a little bit of work. First, I wanna focus on the real benefits of using this today. The first one is you can generate your product requirements document in this structured JSON format. I love structured data and getting structured information about your project, like this is your tech stack, but not in a readme document in like a JSON list. I love that. And I also love the fact that it creates all of these tests for you using Playwright. And as you've seen, TestSprite isn't really gatekeeping the data. 
they're like, here's all your tests. It's part of your repo. Go commit it to GitHub. Sure, that's fine. And I love that so much. And if you want to pay for the feature of being able to actually run those tests and take those screenshots, I really think that's going to be valuable for a lot of people. And then TestBright allows you to do that by signing up for their service. And I have one last thought from a development perspective on how TestSprite went about building their MCP server. And the key aspect that I'm focused in is on their authentication mechanism. And they used API keys to authenticate using an environment variable. That requires you to put your API key in into the cursor configuration file or whatever configuration you have in your MCP host. And to me, that's really interesting. I recently demonstrated a tool called Byte Rover that does authentication using a totally different method that doesn't involve any API keys. But it had its drawbacks where you would be unauthenticated often, you'd have to keep re-authenticating. Whereas the test sprite solution with the API key is much simpler on the server side for, for test sprite. And it's also a much better user experience, I'd say. The only downside is that you now have this secret key inside of your MCP file, but it's understood that those are private files that shouldn't be shared anyway. So I really like this solution. And for me, this is how I'm thinking about building authenticated MCP servers. If you wanna learn more about building MCP servers, I'm gonna link a video for you here, and you can check that out if you have some time. Thank you for watching and namaste.